Today, we tend to hide sewage treatment works away, some distance from where the waste comes from. But the Victorians wanted to boast about how they used the technology of the day to solve a problem that their predecessors struggled with. So the rich and the good of Leicester built the Abbey Sewage Pumping Station for all to see. The Abbey Station is still here today and able to steam its four huge beam engines in the magnificent building which is now also Leicester's Science and Technology Museum. And Andy Simpson is the senior curator there. Hello, I'm Andrew Simpson and I'm the curator here at the Abbey Pumping Station Museum. This is Leicester's Science and Technology Museum. We've been operating here on this site since about 1972, but before that, right until 1964, this was Leicester's Sewage Works. From 1890 to 1964, this site and an adjacent building and an adjacent site pumped all of Leicester's sewage and storm water up the hill to what was then City Farms, at an height of about 167 feet, which is roughly the height of the chimney that we have on site. The corporation managed to purchase the land on top of the hill, which was then owned by the uh, Beaumont family. And they started what at the time was the biggest sewage, municipal sewage scheme in the country. By 1890, these engines were actually in operation, pumping uh, up 16 and three quarter million gallons of sewage and storm water up to the treatment works at Beaumont Lees every day. The capacity could actually be increased to 20 million gallons if the need, if the need arise. But the main attraction is, of course, the pumping station and its engines. Well, this is the, uh, the main area of the, the actual engine house. This is the bit where, when the visitors actually came in, the dignitaries with the opening ceremony, they would have actually come in. Originally, these floors, I'm told, were actually painted with fire clay so they would be white. Uh, if you notice on the actual floors themselves, they're well worn where over the years the engine men have walked backwards and forwards. This is where the main, main um, flywheels are. There's four engines here. Um, supposedly identical engines, but they're all actually got their own different personalities. Um, you can see the actual conrod and the cranks coming up. And behind me is the cylinders. These are a compound engine. Um, that means they've actually got two cylinders. One's an high pressure cylinder, uh, where the steam goes into initially, and then from there it goes to a low pressure cylinder, which is larger diameter. Uh, so the use, steam gets used twice. You've got to remember these are Victorian engines. They were pretty oily engines. All the oilers are actually um, capillary action, so you have brass cups with wicks in, and the oil's drawn up and down and into the, into the pipe and then into the, the bronze bearings. Here, there is a need to get the pistons into the right position correctly in the cylinder so that when the steam is let in, they are in the best position to start. So the engines need to be barred into that position. When we bar the engine over, there is actually barring engines, but we never use them. And I understand the chaps, when it was actually pumping sewage, certainly in the 1950s, they never used these barring engines at all. They, what they tended to do was actually, um, the driver would open the valve and they would open one of the sewage valves and the pressure of the sewage coming in would actually start the engine to revolve and he'd pick it up with the steam and off the engine would go. We use a bar now on the outside of the wheel and I understand that's how they used to use it as well. Once the engine is correctly positioned, it can then be started. The main steam valve is opened and closed to initially get the piston and the flywheel moving. Then, once running, the engine will run automatically with very little attention, the governor system ensuring the speed stays constant.
On the top, or beam level, are the four massive beams, whose rocking motion transfers the power of the steam-driven pistons to the rotating action and flywheel which drives the pumps. Well, here we are on top of the, uh, the top of the engine house on the beam floor. As you can see, number two beam is rocking away. The beams themselves are 22 foot long and weigh 15 tonnes. It's a modern feature at these engines that they actually are plate beam. A few years previous to this, there would have either been cast iron or smaller plates riveted into sections. But by 1890, when these engines were built, they had the technology, it was battleship technology, and they could actually have big rolling mills to roll big plates of steel. So there's two slabs of steel there. You can see at this end the parallel link motion and the oilers. As I mentioned previously, the oilers, this is one of the larger ones on the main bearing, all they are is just a dash pot and worsted wool, and that just goes into a tube, and capillary action actually draws the oil in very slowly down through the bearings, and in this case, there's actually a catch tray, so you can actually reuse the oil. The engines were built by Jimson's, a local company, as was the crane, which is a manually operated thing that travels the length of the engine house roof. It's quite an airy space, but obviously you needed this to actually get rid of, dissipate all the heat and the steam, if there was any escape of steam. And again, it was gas lit originally. It wasn't until the 1920s that electricity came onto the site. The conrod at the far end, you can see the conrod, it's coming up down, that's 22 uh, feet long. That's directing, driving directly onto the crank and onto the flywheel. One of the great things about Abbey is that it is one of the few places like this where the actual pumps and mechanisms that were powered by the engines to move the wastewater and sewage can still be seen. We're now in the directly underneath the driving floor of the engine. This is the valve floor, the intermediate area before we actually reach the basement. This is where they actually the valve mechanism comes through the wall the way it's driven by the, by the uh, bevel gear on the flywheel. You can see the eccentrics moving slowly foot round, opening and closing the valve cranks, which are in turn flywheels, 21 tons and 21 foot diameter flying above my head, and also the 22, 22 foot conrod and crank directly above my head. It's quite worrying actually to see all that metalwork spinning above one's head. To my left is the front pump, as I mentioned there's two pumps per engine and above my head there's the output pipe which goes into a retort. All the retort does was actually to assist the... It's interesting that the National Space Centre, a place for highlighting the technology of the 20th and 21st centuries, has been positioned right next to the Abbey site, which is a fine example of the architecture and technology of the 19th. So when you visit Abbey, you will be seeing a marvellous example of Victorian urban infrastructure that improved the lives of everyone who lived in Leicester, set in a typically fine Victorian building, but also a functioning reminder of British engineering heritage. <laughs>